Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video, uh, I'm going to tell you the story of a Waffle House in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee, to be, to be specific, which I try to be. Uh, unless I'm using the bathroom. This is one of those cases, right, where it's like, yo, don't blame me, I was just following orders, you know, blame the person I was listening to. But it just so happens the person they were listening to was like, you know, the dog or something. Then I open up, so that's suspicious, you know. I think that's suspicious that I see these fingerprints on there. Uh, I, was, I was walking by, trying to figure out who's knocking on my window. Someone's knocking on my window outside of the building. These voices were telling him, though, that he was being stalked. Stalked by Taylor Swift, no less, which, hey, doesn't sound like much of a problem to me, you know what I mean? Though that's just how the story begins. It's not how it ends. So let's give it a go! To begin, let's go to Antioch, which is a neighborhood in southeast Nashville, Tennessee. It's one of the fastest growing areas of the city, mainly because it's a decent location and the rent is a-okay with me. As far as crime rates go in the area, it seems to be kind of a kind of a mixed bag. Some people say it has a reputation of being not the safest, but others say, you know, they've they've never felt um never felt in danger. It's always been a lovely area. More recently though, there's been a surge, but we are not going to more recently, we are going to the year 2018. At 3571 Murfreesboro Pike lies a Waffle House, that's in eastern Antioch, along the busy road heading into or right out of downtown Nashville. It only opened just earlier that year, and so we are going there to the early morning of the 22nd of April, 2018, not to chow down, my friends, virtual breakfasts being the worst sort of breakfasts. I don't know where I'm going with this. What was I going to say? Uh, the point is, that Waffle House and all Waffle Houses, you know, they're open 24-7. Waffle House does not close, like, ever. There's even a metric called the Waffle House Index, where you can judge how bad a storm or a hurricane will be by uh, whether Waffle Houses are open or not. If the Waffle House near you closes during a storm, uh, it basically just means you're fucked. And this Waffle House we are going to in Antioch, it was open at around 3.20 a.m. on the 22nd of April, 2018. It was a Sunday morning, you know, people heading in for some soakage after a, after a night out, and into the car park. That dark night pulled a gold Chevy Silverado pickup. The Waffle House was busy enough, there was over 20 customers inside, and the driver of that pickup stayed inside his vehicle and just watched for about four minutes. What he was doing during those four minutes, nobody knows. Um, just staring, thinking, preparing. Then, at 3.24, he got out. He was wearing nothing but a green jacket hanging down, but in his hands was an AOR-15. He walked towards that Waffle House, and he started shooting. His name was Travis Ryan King, and this was a long, and I mean like, long, long time coming. There was a million, like, uh, warning signs, you know what I mean, that this was imminent. Right, and, and still, still it happened. Many people's lives were ruined by this, while, you know, other people's lives were just ended. Travis was born on the 1st of February, 1989. His parents, Jeffrey and Judy. He was from the small town of Morton, Illinois. It's in central Illinois, small enough less than 20,000 people reside, and it is the self-declared pumpkin capital of the world. That's nice, good for them. You are the pumpkin capital of the world. Travis grew up in a middle-class house, one of four, and he had everything he wanted. His dad owned his own company, J&J Cranes, a crane rental company, which operated out of treatment, which is the next town over. They were a well-respected family, you know, good peoples. Travis, uh, he was homeschooled for pretty much all his youth, he spent one semester um, in the local high school, after which his parents were like, not really for him. Don't know why they took, nobody does like zero records of why Travis was 
taken out of the local school and brought back home to be homeschooled. Um, the teachers didn't remember him there, other students didn't remember him there at all. He was like, he was one of those just very much under the radar sort of fellas. Well, he feckin' made up for that later, let me tell ya. After school, Travis got a job with the family business, working in the construction sector, and he began renting an apartment on his lonesome, which was in fact uh, located above J&J &J Cranes. Now, it was in the middle of nowhere, no neighbours at all, so to speak. And so it was around the year 2014, when he was at the tender age of about 24 years old, 25 years old, that he started to hear things and see things. This was in his mid-twenties, and um, your mid-twenties is when you are most, uh, you're most likely to develop schizophrenia, and Travis sure as hell did. But what was really like the crux of it for Travis was when, in 2015, he went to a concert at, at Taylor Swift gig, right? A uh, big fan, I guess he is. And so he was having a good time, you know, bopping away. And during that gig, he saw Taylor Swift mouth to him. And so after that, he was upset. Now, um, it seems very unlikely she did that, like he was seeing it, but he became completely obsessed with Taylor Swift after that. Things going off the rails swiftly followed. He was obsessed. He started to believe they were boyfriend, girlfriend, that she was speaking to him, talking to him, sending him messages. He began writing letters to her. Um, God knows where these letters are actually going in reality. I mean, I... Who knows? Here's a letter. Taylor, I'm really confused right now. I don't know if it was you in the pictures on Instagram or someone who looks like you. Do you really have a twin sister? Which is the one I'm in love with then? I want the Taylor that wrote those beautiful songs and sang to me at her concert. Maybe Taylor 1 wrote half and Taylor 2 wrote half. Maybe I saw Taylor 1 in Morton and Taylor 2 in concert. Who was the girl in the music videos then? Yeah, he, he completely believed um, they were boyfriend-girlfriend, they would fight, they would send messages shoot to each other, they would talk to each other all the time. Obviously this was completely up here. And he did not keep it to himself. He was happily, you know, yapping away. Oh, she's you know, ball and chain, you know, Taylor Swift, she's acting up again. Well, women, well, and people were, you know. This was just the start. Uh, and his parents soon become, um, deservedly so, you know, very, very worried about uh, young Travis, who was, um, the delusions were only getting worse. It was in May 2016 that his parents called uh, the county sheriff asking essentially for help about what he was going through. He clearly needed help. Uh, you know, he was going off the rail. Like, he, he, he was telling them, you know, they were sending messages to each other all the time, writing letters. She was um, communicating with him all the time. He even claimed that once him and Taylor Swift had agreed to meet at the local Dairy Queen. And when he arrived, he saw her. She sprinted off and then spider man up a building, and he was like, where is she gone? He was utterly paranoid at this point, um, believing that his parents and the police were also in on it too. So clearly he, uh, needed, he needed some help, right? It was help he would never really get. Um, so after his parents called the police, you know, saying, here, listen, we need to take him to a hospital, he needs... He needs treatment. He he resisted, but he went eventually. He was in for about nine days. And the doctors were like, well, here's a prescription. You are diagnosed with schizophrenia. You're, you're good to go, pal. You know, take care, champ. He got his, you know, his, the medication, but he was not taking shit. A couple of months later, he moved to Salida, Colorado, and he lived there from August 2016 to the following March 2017 working in the crane industry for a family friend. There, you know, people would say he was, he was a nice, polite, friendly guy who was obsessed with Taylor Swift. He was telling all the co-workers, yeah, you know, we're getting married. He even bought a 14 grand diamond ring for their wedding, but he would also say that she was stalking him. He was now saying she had done the old switcheroo and she was hacking his computers and uh, breaking into his apartment and doing it all.
911 emergency. Yeah, um, I need to report something, and every time I go to the sheriff's office, it's closed. Okay, what do you need to report? Um, I have somebody stalking me around town, and I do not appreciate it. I want it to stop, and no one seems to take me seriously when I say that. Okay, and who is it that's stalking you? Taylor Swift. Okay, and what is your name? Travis Ranking. I mean, everywhere I go, like, they're stalking on the internet, they're stalking me, like, in person. Everywhere I go, I'm pretty sure, like, the police here are involved in it. And, like, I want it to stop. It's stupid. No one has the right to do that to me. What exactly are they doing? They're getting, like, on my, they're doing some kind of, like, I don't know. I don't know exactly how they're doing it. But somehow they're, like, getting on my Facebook, they're getting on my YouTube, they're getting on my Netflix, and they're changing the videos that I see as they pop up. He eventually left after he believed the police were in on it, too. And so the owner of that um, construction company in Colorado calls. Uh, Jeffrey Ryan King would be like, Hey, listen, um, I think your son might need some help. He's not all together together. Like, his parents fully knew what was going on. Um, nothing kind of really happened, though. I mean, you know how I began this story. He moved back to the apartment in Tremont, and three months later, he approached an employee of his father's business, wearing nothing bought a pink dress and carrying an AR-15 screaming at uh, this other employee. You don't usually want someone screaming at you when they're carrying a rifle. And so after he ran away, he, he, he ran into his car and he drove off. And then later that same day, he went to a public pool uh, in, in Illinois and he jumped in, again wearing, wearing the pink dress. And so when the police were called uh, to be, you know, hey, there's this guy doing odd stuff in this public pool, um, well, he took off all his clothes and he just showed them his dick. So, he did love hanging dong, um, but at this stage, clearly, uh, well, his family knew something was wrong, his friends knew something was wrong, and nothing happened again. My parents, like, had me taken to a mental institution for looking for Taylor Swift. Because a long time ago, I was like, I had read some stuff on the internet, and it made me think that she was uptown. So I was like, I'll just go look uptown and see if she's up there, you know? And I asked my mom to go with me, because I was like, I don't want to be bored just, like, playing this game, you know? So I'll have someone go with me, and they can help me, you know, find this person, you know? And so I asked my mom to go. Next thing I know, we're at, out front of CVS, and, the, and the, the police are pulling up. This guy comes out from ERS, the police pull up, you know, and I'm being arrested and everything. This is where I live, this is where I reside. No one can come in here. The door is locked. There's no one, there's nothing saying anyone can come in here. And so, anyway, I come in here, I come into my bathroom, and I notice in my bathroom that the toilet seat is up. The toilet seat is up on my toilet. I haven't put my toilet seat up. I know for a fact that this toilet seat was down. I know for a fact that the toilet seat was down. I, I never put my toilet seat up because I don't like it messing up my toilet. And yet this is, what, this is what's happened. And then before, you know, I have come in here and the door, the door will be cracked like that. You know, it's not all the way shut. It's not all the way open. I always leave it all the way open or I leave it all the way shut. So somebody has been coming in here. And then like I said to my dad the other day, there was fingerprints on the sides of my laptop. There's fingerprints on the sides. I never opened the lid that way. Why is somebody coming in my apartment and doing this stuff? You know, this is illegal. Why is somebody getting on my private property like that? Why is someone going to my bathroom? And that's the thing, is I know for a fact that I never lift the toilet seat. I never put the toilet seat up. I never do that. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe once in a while, you know, if I've been drinking or something like that. I don't know, you know. It, maybe I'll lift it up then, you know, just because I don't know why. But I know for a fact, before I left here today, just to go to Starbucks, that that was down. I mean, if anybody saw, like, if his parents, friends saw this video, um, he was slipping through the cracks or people just didn't know how to deal with him. I don't know. 
Has to be a pretty feckin' big crack. Then, in July 2017, right, so I'm just listing through all of the incidents that Travis was up to. In July 2017, he went to the White House and he demanded an audience uh, with uh, Trump at the time. You know, uh, he said he was a sovereign citizen and he had a right to inspect the grounds. Um, he's very lucky he wasn't shot by, by the Secret Service. Um, he, but you know, he was saying he was a sovereign citizen and he did not recognize the US government. Unfortunately though, the government recognized, recognized him. So for that, for trying to break into the White House, he got the mighty punishment of 32 community service hours. So. And the, the police, they did take all his guns away from him. He had like an assault rifle, handguns, all sorts of stuff, um, shotguns and all. The police, they, they were like, okay, listen, you can't have a, a firearm, obviously. Uh, so they took it all away, and they later gave it to his dad, Jeffrey, who later gave it back to Travis. So. In the autumn of 2017, Travis then moved to Nashville, Tennessee, which is where Taylor Swift calls home. So then in February, literally, like it's like every couple of, every two months, something happens. A big red flag happens, but the race doesn't stop. In February 2018, in Alcoa, which is three hours east of Nashville, the police were once again called on Travis Reinking. A young mother uh, was staying at a motel with her two small children, and um, Travis was right outside her room. He was shouting and roaring, claiming that, you know, people were stalking him, people were harassing him, people were, like, outside his room window looking in. Um, so he was roaring her head off, and this this young mother, she went out, and she was like, here, listen, my, my kids are trying to sleep, would you just maybe shut up? So he then burst into her room, and he started threatening her. So the police were called. I came out here to my car and this man down here was running up and down these, up the top and then down here screaming at everyone's door telling them he'll make as much noise as he wants and I looked at him I said I have kids and they're getting ready for bed and he was right there in that white truck literally ran into our hotel and tried to hit me acted like he was going to put his hands on me. Where's he at now? He's down there with the man that owns this place. Down they're the walking towards the office. 237. Hey man, what's going on? How's it going? Good. I don't know, I just, I'm trying to get a refund. So okay, I, uh, we just got a call that you just went in somebody else's room. No, I didn't go in anyone's room. Right. You got your ID on you? Yeah. The reason I'm here is we just got a call from, I think it's room 125, that you went into the room without being invited in, basically. No, I didn't ever go in. Okay, were you banging on the door or anything like that? No, I was, she, I was walking by trying to figure out who's knocking on my window. Someone's knocking on my window outside of the building. They come outside of the railing, out, right, right out front of the door. You know, there's no one, there's no one to stand right in front of my door. Okay. And they'll be tossing them out at night, they'll, they'll knock on the windows and then walk all off, and I don't know who it is. Okay. And they do this just to harass somebody. And it's several nights in a row, I got sick of it, so I went out. I'm walking up and down the porch and I'm making noise, you know, because I don't like it. I don't like shit like that. I don't want other people to understand how I feel. You okay. so know, when, when people are just being loud and noisy for no fucking reason, this lady then comes walking up and she's like, what are you doing? And blah, blah, blah. You know, just sitting here knows the business. So like, if you just got here, I mean, apparently you have nothing to do with it. But now, now she wants to please people. And it's just like, what are you doing? You know, just leave, you know, leave me alone. The lady, she declined to press charges, and Travis left. You're saying one thing, she's saying something different, so it's he said, she said at this point. I would, yeah, I'd recommend just, you know, if you're going to try to get out of here, find you another place, all right? So, all right, man. He again worked in construction until early April 2018 when he was fired. He got another job swiftly after. He showed up for one day, and then never again. Then, in May 2018, he somehow, um, he went to a BMW dealership. He somehow was able to steal the key for a car. He led the police on this, like, GTA, very brief, uh, police chase. Do 
and then abandoned the car outside his apartment, uh, his, outside his apartment complex. Um, so the car was recovered, they used GPS to find it, um, but they didn't know who had done it, so they didn't arrest them, they didn't know Travis was responsible. And then, in the early hours of May 22nd, 2018, Travis, that dark night, he pulled into the parking lot of the Waffle House in Antioch and watched. After four minutes, he got out with an assault rifle. He opened fire at two people standing outside. One was Joe Perez Jr., who had stopped by because he had a flat tire, and another was Therene Sanderlin, a cook who had stepped outside for a smoke break. Then he began shooting into the restaurant, and he marched in, firing all the way, while terrified patrons ducked, ducked for cover. Some hid in the bathroom, calling 911. Some played dead, others tried to get into the bathrooms, but the doors were locked. And then Travis began shooting at the people huddled on the floor. Ultimately, four people would be killed by Travis that night. Joe Perez Jr., Toreen Sanderlin, D. Ebony Groves, and Aquila De Silva. It would have also been a hell of a lot more, if not for the extremely brave actions of one of the customers inside, 29-year-old James Shaw Jr. When Travis burst in, he, he ran, but he slipped as he ran towards the bathroom. A bullet had, had grazed his elbow, and so when Travis got in there, James lunged for him. He grabbed the rifle by its red-hot barrel, completely scalding his hand, and he managed to struggle with Travis, ultimately winning and tossing the weapon behind the counter. They then wrestled for a bit, Travis lost his jacket, and then Travis ran outside. Travis then booked it into the woods nearby. The whole thing lasted for 42 seconds. The police were late arriving actually because they went to the wrong Waffle House, but when they arrived the scene was absolute carnage. The truck, it was identified quickly and linked to Travis right away, but it wasn't much of a whodunit. And then the manhunt began. According to witnesses, the person of interest in this matter, a Travis Ryan King, arrived in his pickup truck. He got out. There were persons outside the restaurant talking. He shot them. He then went inside the restaurant. More shots were fired, and one of the patrons was hit. Uh, the police department special response team, uh, officers from a variety of components of the police department, as well as our helicopter, is up now trying to find him. Travis, he had run all the way back to his apartment, he had showered, he had changed, and he had put together a backpack which included a handgun. The police, they arrived there swiftly after, but they just missed him. We're telling everybody to be very cautious. We don't want to alarm people, but certainly everybody should take precaution. Residents were advised to lock their doors, the, the dogs came out, the whirly birds came out, and Travis even made it briefly to the FBI's 10 most wanted. The manhunt for Travis Ryan King lasted 36 hours before this call uh, was made. He's in behind the elementary school, headed towards the TVA lines in the woods. From a distance, it looks like this guy. He's got mud all over him. Travis Ryan King was arrested and charged with the four murders along with a host of other charges. And finally, Travis Ryan King was, well, not necessarily sure if it's where he belongs, but at least there he couldn't hurt anyone else or himself. Though he had already done enough damage, that's for sure. Diebony Groves was 21 years old, a senior at Belmont University, a top student and a star athlete. Aquila Da Silva was 23 years old, and it seems he had a budding music career ahead, he was a rapper and video producer, he was hard working, and he had a bright future. Tareen Sanderlin was 29 years old, a Tennessee native, and he'd been working at that Waffle House for about 5 years. He was known as a loving family man. Joe Perez was 20, from Texas, and he worked in an appliance store. He was only at that Waffle House as he had a, he had a flat tire and he had pulled in. He was actually calling his brother to help him out when Travis arrived. The call never went true. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> um, so, last night, uh, 
I went out with uh, my best friend. Um, we went to a we went to a club out in uh, Antioch, the Antioch area. That if it was gonna come down to it, he was gonna have to work to work to kill me. So at the time that he was either reloading or the gun jammed or whatever happened, is when I ran through the the swivel door. And I hit him with the swivel door, and then. The, ga- the gun was kind of jammed up and it was pushed down, so we were scuffling. Yeah, I knew I had it in me, but uh, I haven't had any specific combat training. It's just, you know, I fight my daughter every night so I can get her put her to bed. But uh. Okay. Mr. Rankin, you've got uh, four new charges. I'm the magistrate with the uh, night court, and we're here to uh, tell you your charges and the amount of your bond. You have four charges for criminal homicide. Total bond is $2 million. Do you have any question about your charges or your bond? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, sir. In August 2018, Travis Ryan King, he was uh, deemed incompetent to stand at trial. He was diagnosed uh, with schizophrenia. However, the judge later uh, reversed what the psychologists and the psychiatrists said and deemed him fit fit to stand trial. He was like, you're good enough. He was indicted on 17 counts and he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. We'll begin uh, with the uh, defense and the prosecution with their opening arguments expected to come down, setting the stage for the rest of the trial. Keep in mind, just as Aaron said, the defense will address the issue of Travis ranking sanity or lack of it at the time of the crime. The prosecution will make the point that he knew the difference from right or wrong and that he would not have ran from the scene of the shooting if he didn't know the difference. His trial began in early uh, 2022. His defense, you know, rested on he was he was not mentally well. He didn't know what he was doing. He was not in control. He was not, you know, he was not there. Is that Travis Ryan King is severely mentally ill. He's schizophrenic. And he's battled this for years. And you're going to hear expert testimony to talk about about a three to five year period leading up to that night when he's in Nashville, he is completely untethered from reality. And he is driven by his delusion that people are after him. You're going to hear a testimony that Mr. Ryan King believed that he could communicate with aliens and was regularly communicating with aliens. That Mr. Ryan King believed he could speak directly and to God. You're going to hear that Mr. Ryan King believed he was commanded by God to go to the Waffle House. In defense of himself and other people, that the people at the Waffle House, in his mind, were government agents. They were responsible for all the torment that he was perceiving over those years. The prosecution, though, were arguing he planned everything he did. He knew it, and he followed through with it. Now, when Travis Reinking showed up to that Waffle House, he chose not to wear any clothing other than that green jacket that carried the two additional magazines, the 60 additional rounds. He fired 30 rounds Travis Ryan King made a choice. He made several choices that led to the shooting. Travis Ryan King went there to take something that couldn't be given back. He went there to take lives. The evidence will be that this was an act of revenge done out of anger. In the criminal court of Davidson County, Tennessee, Division 6, State of Tennessee versus Travis J. Ranking, we, the jury, unanimously find Travis J. Ranking for the offense of 
premeditated first degree murder. Guilty. Count two, we the jury. He was found guilty on all charges and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Punishment of imprisonment for life without possibility of parole or imprisonment for life. And there he remains today, hopefully getting the treatment he should have gotten many, many years before. James Shaw Jr. is a recognized hero, deservedly so. He saved, I mean, countless lives, if, if not for his actions to stop Travis, many, many more uh, would have been murdered. Really brave guy. Uh, he ended up raising a load of money for the victim's families as well. He was like, fair play, fair play to him. Travis Ringking is accused of killing four people at a Waffle House in Nashville last year. Prosecutors say his father, Jeffrey Ringking, who lives in Morton, Illinois, was holding Travis's guns because his FOID card was revoked. However, they say Dad Jeffrey gave them back to son Travis. Travis's dad, uh, Jeffrey Ringking, he too would be arrested because, um, well, you know, he did give the gun back to his son, who is clearly mentally ill, and the same gun he would use when he walked into that Waffle House. The authorities initially did the right thing by saying this guy should not have a gun. Uh, and then Jeffrey was like, whoops. He hasn't been sentenced yet. I, I understand he applied for a new attorney. He could get up to three years in prison or probation. Travis was like really, really screwed. I mean, it's one of those cases. I don't really know what to think. He clearly needed, needed help. Uh, help he never got, even though there was, you know, red flags everywhere. I mean, he was insane at the time, clearly. He, you know, there's a lot of instances of him not being uh, in the right frame of mind. Um, but then he also cruelly murdered four people and injured a hell of a lot more, too. I don't know. Should he be in a hospital right now? Should he be in prison right now, you know? Let me know your thoughts about this case, as always, down below. I don't really feel there's any kind of clear conclusion to this. It was just a lot of shit went wrong. That shouldn't have. But, yeah. Kind of wraps this one up. Not really in a nice little bow, but I mean, is there ever in life? So... Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate you taking the time to be here with me watching this whole video, which is the end of the video, if you probably guessed. Um, but really, it means a lot. Um, and sure, I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. So until then, please, as always, take care of yourselves. Cause I love you, my girl.